This is Southern Cross News with Rick Fontaine. Good evening. A prominent Tasmanian cricketer and politician is one of two men who have drowned off Anson's Bay in the state's northeast. Tony Bennyworth, along with his friend Tony Long, are being remembered following the tragic incident. The popular holiday town of Anson's Bay is in mourning after a boating trip late yesterday went terribly wrong. Police say a dinghy was in the water near Policeman's Point when it started taking on water. Despite desperate attempts to empty the boat, it capsized. Whilst the indication is that it is a wave that flooded the boat, we can't say categorically at this stage what occurred. Two men drowned. One was Tony Bennyworth, aged 67. A star cricketer, he was part of the first Tasmanian side to win a domestic competition when he took three wickets in the final of the 1979 Gillette Cup. And now right through now Tasmania at Benelworth, three wickets. He later entered politics, serving in state parliament before running as a candidate for Bass in the 2001 federal election. Today, his party released a statement describing the former Liberal member as a great advocate for Northern Tasmania. Bennyworth also became a public supporter of the low-carb diet devised by his close friend Gary Fetke. The pair last spoke on Friday. Tony was one of those larger-than-life characters that when he became determined to do something, he was able to achieve it. And he made that decision with his health both for himself and the community. The other man who died in the tragedy was Tony Long, 73 years of age from Launceston. Long was also a distinguished sportsman, having represented the state a number of times in lawn bowls and being named life member of the Trevallon Bowls Club. Both Long and Bennyworth were heavily involved with the club. Tony Bennyworth was an administrator extraordinary. Tony Long was a very, very accomplished bowler. They've known each other for a long, long time. A third man in the boat, aged 69, swam 500 metres back to shore and raised the alarm with a local fisherman. Police say the survivor is distressed but did not need medical attention. Two men were able to put life jackets on as the emergency developed. A uh, third man wasn't able to do so. Uh, he's one of the deceased persons and the other deceased person had difficulty, we understand, inflating the life jacket once he was in the water. The bodies of the deceased have been recovered and police say they'll work to salvage the boat at low tide. A report will now be prepared for the coroner. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Tasmanian political hopefuls are holding their breath ahead of crucial counts following last week's state election. The distribution of preferences kicks off after the postal vote cut off on Tuesday. The uh, people who will be distributed first, or redistributed first, will be the ones with the lowest vote. These are coming from the minor parties, the independents for the most part, but also a lot of Greens. The fifth seats in Bass and Braddon are still unknown. Madeleine Ogilvy could lose out to a fellow Labor candidate in Denison. In Franklin, there's a tight tussle between the Liberals' Nick Street and the Greens' Rosalie Woodruff. And Rebecca White's excess quota will flow between five Labor candidates in Lyons, with one likely to join Parliament. Thousands of peckish visitors have spent their day at Ranella for the 26th Taste of the Huon. Local producers are showing off their region's produce in what's already proving to be a huge boost to the local economy. A tasty way to spend a Sunday. Over a hundred stalls catering to everyone at the Taste of the Huon. Just waiting for some Bruni Island wallaby sticks. This is my first year here being a vegan, so it's interesting to try new stuff. Visitors flocking to Ranala to celebrate the event's 26th year. Set ourselves up with a little picnic blanket and just having a bit of a look around. Come down for the food, the environment, the music is really good. Uh, our local caravan park, which is probably two minutes drive from here, has been full for the last two or three days. Businesses, many of them born and bred in the Huon Valley, reaping the rewards. And being out in little old Ranala, it's a little bit, can be quiet sometimes. So, yeah, a bit of exposure is nice. There seem to be a lot of tourists about and it's great to be able to share our story with them. Organisers say there's over 8,000 people here today visiting from across Tasmania to sample all the region has to offer. We've got a Huon salmon slider and I think we've done about 200 of those already today. The food, fun and frivolities is on again tomorrow. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News.
Tasmania's Italian community has marked a tradition. They march the streets of Hobart from St Mary's Church to the Italian Club, waving flags and carrying a statue for the San Carlo procession. The event celebrating the former Archbishop of Milan. After working up an appetite, the march was followed by a feast. A cleanup crew has just returned from an epic mission cleaning up Tasmania's far southwest. They collected more than 100,000 pieces of rubbish, much of it plastic, from what's meant to be pristine wilderness. Tasmania's southwest is as remote as it is spectacular, but this World Heritage Area still feels the impacts of humans. We're so far from a major population centre, um, and it's, yeah, some of the beaches are just totally choked up with rubbish. You know, it takes us. For a 200 metre stretch of coast, it took us six and a half hours to clean. A team of more than 30 volunteers undertook a 10-day mission to clean up the coast. They were dropped in by boat and combed the shoreline. In the morning, you'd jump up, jump on a dinghy, go into the beach, got a couple of bags, a couple of big bags, pick up the big items and a couple of like sandwich bags to pick up all the little pieces and then at the end of the day, jump back on the boat. The crew has returned with more than 112,000 pieces of rubbish. I would say that's probably a broken up oil drum. Some items carried by ocean currents from thousands of kilometres away. This year we found Japan, China, Korea, a bit of South African, some South American. So we, we find stuff from everywhere, lots of Australian stuff and Tasmanian stuff. The bigger items included tyres, a chair and tubing believed to be from a fish farm. Much of the smaller pieces are bits of plastic which have broken down. I've tried to live with as little plastic as I can and it's, it's a really difficult thing to do. But if we can educate a young generation on how to do it and, and what choices to make and make them aware of the issue, then it's, it's, it, we're going to be going a long way to solving the problem. And cleaning up Tasmania's coastlines for good. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Well, they may not be very big, but these radio-controlled model cars have today been part of some serious competition. Over 35 people converging in Hobart for the state titles of electric on-road model vehicles, competing for a run on the national stage. And racing with guys that are from around the country that you might not have seen for a while, or, or even your mates or, or club mates here, and it's it's quite a thrilling action pack. Dad and I made this body together. It's an X-ray and it probably takes about two hours to put together. The club meets every second Sunday. A famous musical is returning to the Princess Theatre. The cast of Les Mis performing a dress rehearsal ahead of their opening night. The tale is set against a backdrop of revolutionary unrest in Paris during the 19th century. We've been looking at maybe the characters a little bit more this, this time around. Um, some of the um, intricate philosophies, I believe, of, of the characters. Months in the making, the spectacle opens to the public on Friday. Hawthorne's first game in Tassie for the year was in the balance right up until the final seconds. The Blues holding on for a five-point win in last night's JLT series clash at Utah Stadium. In a frantic final minute of play, Paul Piopolo had the chance to level the scores but couldn't get boot to ball. Hits the ground, he's ready for the handball. Mitchell gives it to him to level the score. Oh, he's no! Good. No! <laughs> and with 10 seconds remaining, Jarman Impey had one last roll of the dice but his long bomb was touched on the line, handing the Blues victory in front of 5,500 spectators. It's good to be able to get our, I guess, our core backline together as well, which we didn't have last year. So um, a lot of those pleasing aspects to be able to get the two games in into them before round one, um, very pleasing. The side was back out on Utah Stadium today, holding its annual family day. Over three hours, fans were able to meet their favourite players and take part in activities. Good evening. Glorious conditions across the north of the state today with Launceston reaching the high of 30 degrees. 29 in Devonport and Hobart and Burnie both 25 degrees. Friendly Beaches 26 today, 25 at Wynyard and St Helens. Lowhead and Flinders Island 24, 23 at Bushy Park, Mariah Island and Grove 21, 19 on King Island and at Liawini and Strawn 18 degrees.
On the satellite, we can see extensive areas of low-level cloud over the Bight and the Southern Ocean following a cold front that crossed Tasmania this morning. Patchy middle-level cloud blankets inland parts of Western Australia and Northern Territory. Isolated thunderstorms are present about the north. And a close-up look at the low-level cloud over the west and far south of the state, with convective cloud developing about the northeast in the afternoon. Tomorrow, a series of cold fronts enter the Tasman Sea and weaken. The high in the bite is becoming more dominant, sustaining a southwesterly airstream over Tasmania. A trough lingers off the west coast of WA and the monsoon trough is north of the top end. Coastal waters, west to south westerly winds 20 to 25 knots, reaching 30 knots about the north, lower east and south, seas 2 to 3 metres. A strong wind warning is current from Stanley to Eddiston Point and also from Wineglass Bay to Low Rocky Point. In the south tomorrow, showers developing in Hobart, 19, a shower or two for Dover, 17 and 18 at Ouse. Partly cloudy conditions in the north, 23 in Launceston, 22 at Scottsdale and Devonport, 21 degrees. Burnie, 21 and partly cloudy, showers for Strawn, only making it to 17 tomorrow and a shower or two for Stanley, 20. Partly cloudy in the east, with Swansea and Ross both 21, a possible shower for St Helens, 22. The UV is mostly high across the state. Looking ahead to Tuesday, showers about the west and far south, mainly fine elsewhere. Similar conditions expected for Wednesday. And Thursday looking the same again with those showers about the west and far south, but mainly fine elsewhere. To the mainland now, partly cloudy in Perth, Adelaide and Sydney, possible showers for Melbourne, Canberra, Brisbane and Cairns, a possible storm for Darwin and a sunny day in Alice Springs. Currently in Hobart, it's 19 and clear, Launceston 25 and clear, Devonport 23 and clear. And that's all for the day's weather. It's looking like a nice night ahead, Rick. Yeah, thanks, Carmen. I'm certainly not getting tired of this beautiful weather. Well, that is all your news for this Sunday night. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm Rick Fontaine. Have a lovely Sunday evening. Good night.